Welcome to YouTube interview, the effects of the COVID-19 virus on the arts and beyond. My name is Brian Murphy, and I have a very special guest today. This is Kate Webb from Ver Ballets. Hi, Kate. Hi. Hi, Brian. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. What about yes. you? I'm doing well. Do the best we can, right? So, you know, Kate, um, first of all, I want to ask you, how has this whole situation, how are you faring? Overall, I'm faring pretty all right because, you know, all things considered, I'm incredibly lucky and I keep thinking about that all the time. It's, there's such scary things going on out there. So, you know, I feel very lucky overall. You're great. And, you know, um, in the last six months or so, you've been injured. You had an injury. Mm -hmm. Talk about your injury and talk about how this has actually kind of helped you at this point. Yeah. Um, so I would say the hardest thing for probably any dancer ever, but for me, especially as being injured, it's the worst ever. And, um, I was, yeah, I was supposed to do a bunch of nutcrackers with you and I had a foot sprain. Um, that was the second time it had come back. Um, that once again was sneaking up and it just wouldn't, wouldn't go away. And we, we had a crazy season for verb starting January with Laura Alonzo and going to Cuba and everything I knew. I needed to take that time um, to rest it. Uh, and I was resting it for almost, I guess, two months. Two months, was, about two yeah, months, yeah. Which was a really long time. Mm. And also very scary because anytime you're not, first of all, anytime you're not doing what you love every day, you're sad. <laughs> and every time you're also feeling like you're falling behind and have a bunch of fear about things you can't control because physically, you know, mentally you can want something so much, but physically if you're not able to do it, then there's a whole element of fear that goes with that. So. And, and also Kate, you were seeing the other dancers dancing. So mm -hmm. not only were you were like alone in this and when you were not alone, but you were going to the studio no, and you were dancing. Long. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Continue. So that sucked <laughs> just like every <laughs> yes. injury does for every injury or every dancer, but I think it did help prepare me a lot for this time because you have to have a lot of trust in yourself that you will be able to get back on stage one day. And even though the situation right now has so much uncertainty, you have to be able to focus on what you can do and what you are certain about and, and know that the things that you're training, even though, you know, um, you can't practice certain te technical things every day. You have training that has guided you for so long um, that you will not completely forget, even though it feels like you will, and it's terrifying. Um, and the things you can do, the Pilates at home or the bars at home or watching performances and visualizing, that's what you can control. Um, so I think having that terrible time out of the studio prior to this helped me prepare to feel a bit more at ease with all of this uncertainty now. Not that it's particularly comfortable, and of yes. course I would you know, prefer to be dancing all day every day, um, but at least I rest a bit more easy after having gone through that experience, knowing that dancers are resilient as all get out and that we can make it through this. So. so give me an idea of what your a day would look like then. Uh, right now, usually I wake up, um, I've been doing virtual teaching, which has been a really cool opportunity um, to connect actually with people all over the world. I, when this all started, um, I enjoy teaching and I wasn't sure what my income would be with everything. So I put out um, just a Facebook status saying I'd be willing to teach virtual lessons. I, I like teaching ballet, but I also like teaching Pilates style or um, yoga stretch classes. And I reconnected with my second grade English teacher. So nice. she's in Virginia. I'm teaching classes to nice. her. So usually in the mornings I wake up and I have about two or three lessons in the morning that I teach. And then I do a class every day. Um, and it's so fun, one or two classes, because there's so many cool classes out there. And yes. Sometimes I, I start a class and it might not be conducive to my space. So I, I'm very lucky to have a good space, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the space I made for myself. But sometimes I, I try doing a, um, 
like a dancing on the floor contemporary class and I kept running in my couch and I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to do a different class. And that's okay because right. there's so many great free resources. So I usually do a class or two. Um, and then I um, usually spend the afternoon um, first of all, I'll make a fun lunch because we actually have time to make fun lunches instead of just my normal boring stuff I pack for verb. Yeah. And then um, I usually try and do social media and marketing type things for, for verb or for Fairmount, the studio that's um, where I teach a lot as mm -hmm. well because I have a lot of passion for arts administration and that's something I'm going to do later. So I'm trying to use that time to also try and help out in that way. Um, and then I usually do lots of long walks with Leia and my fiance um, in the evenings and try and have some time to enjoy. This is the most slow my life has ever been, ever. So I'm yes. like. <laughs> interesting. I'm like, you know, yeah. well, that's interesting, Kate. If you think about it, we, we want to be busy, mm -hmm. but this is an opportunity to maybe think of not to be busy. Exactly. So I'm. My fiance is helping me remember that it's, as well. I tend to, we tend to forget that. I understand that. So here we are now. Mm -hmm. um, let's jump ourselves three months forward, which we don't know idea. How do you think this is going to? Um, what's it going to be like to go back to dancing around people again? Well, I think my personality type, which is very much. I love physical touch. I love human connection. I think I'm going to want to explode out of this and just be with every single person. But I also know, like, I mean, given on how everything's will have progressed, you, I mean, we're gonna have to be more mindful probably. Um, and I mean, I just kind of had a scare with COVID like things and my worst, I, I literally had a nightmare last night that I forgot I had that went into Richmond Ballet which is where I trained and because usually when I'm home I take class maintenance class at Richmond Ballet and I and I went in and I was taking class and I was like oh my god I had this last less than two weeks ago and I'm gonna get all these people sick so I mean I guess depending on where it is we're just gonna have to be really careful with how we contain ourselves because we're touchy people what we do is we are touch and so we have to do that without being a liability to the people we love and all that. So that's true. I, I think it will make every touch more meaningful because we haven't had it for so long. Um, and I, I know I crave that. It's just mm -hmm. special. Of course. Um, so I think it will give us a renewed appreciation for our art form in, in contact. But I think it's going to be something we're going to have to be careful with, just depending on how things are. And also know that Verb Ballets is going to have to deal with audiences and not just Verb Ballets, but the other ones too. Who's going to go to the shows? You know what I mean? And there's going to be, have to, there's going to be probably some deep discussions about when, when do you guys start back? And if you start back now and how far forward do you do a show, that kind of stuff. So it's going to, it's a, this new life that we're going to have to adjust to. And my, my last question, and my last little here is you've been, you've been learning how to be an administrator. You've, you're going to become an expert on how to be a, a dance instructor via internet. Is that going to change once you start dancing in the studio? That's something I've been thinking about as well, because I think personally, um, nothing will ever replace a physical correction the way, especially for for younger children and bodies that aren't as familiar with their muscles. I think the best way to feel something is to feel it. So that's hard to replace. But what I do think this virtual teaching is showing is people who might not be able to leave their house for a certain condition or, or fear of going into the studio for the first time, or maybe they don't have access to teaching where they are, could get a decent level mm. of um, expertise brought to them in the safety of their homes. Like maybe they have an autoimmune condition or maybe they just don't have good transportation or something. Um, so I think there, maybe it can't replace physical teaching, but it can do a lot more than maybe I even thought it could. And if it's something that can supplement, especially if a student 
you know, you have connections with your students. They probably can imagine what it feels like to have Brian's hand right there, you mm -hmm. know, helping them get into alignment. So if you can say, hey, I'm going to use this cue that you know really well, then that can help them even virtually. So I think it, it's a lot more powerful than maybe a lot of us would have given it credit to prior to this. I just don't think it's ever going to replace. Yeah, and, and it can work in parallel. Yeah, and he and him with can, it. And if, you, if you're fair, in Fairmont, for the Fairmont School. Yes. So if you create this curriculum online now, mm -hmm. you go back to the studios, you can refer back to a video. Yes. And also what I'm trying to do, I think one um, weakness that the dance community has, and, and it's because we're so ingrained in tradition and passing down from one person to the other, which is beautiful. But I don't think we've stepped into the technological age nearly as much as a lot of other athletic mm -hmm. um, forms, um, I guess. So now I'm having my, my kids record and look back and kind of do play by play like football teams do or swimmers, all sorts of athletes really hone in on tiny technical things that you know, using video can help with. And I think as dancers, we're used to using the mirror, but you're, it can really distract your eyes and your headline. And if you can fully do a combination and then later you can go back and kind of critique yourself, I think it's another good tool that the virtual teaching kind of builds in. So that's nice, I guess. That's nice and, nice, and we use that as a tool. And I, I just, I, I get this feeling that um, this new life will be the, this internet, this this medium that we're creating now, like you had just said, Kate, is such a good tool, mm -hmm. and I don't. It's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. It might slow down a little, mm -hmm. but the material doesn't go away. Material yeah. stays, right? It doesn't just go off in a distance somewhere. So, yeah. right? So it always is there. Nice library, yeah. Nice yes, library. library and curriculum, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. you know, Kate, this was. Um, this is really enjoyable listening to you talk about perspective of dance, talk about some of the things that you're going to do that, you know, really the, your perspective on when you were injured and now you know how to deal with it. And you're saying, all you got to do is you, you create like a, 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 you know, class every day. Even if you don't like it, go to another one, just do it. Yeah. And you know, and it, it, for some of us dancers, it's hard because we're not used to that. Right. Yeah. And I think not being afraid to, like I said, there are certain classes that I weren't working. So you go to another one. We have just riches and riches of resources yes. online right now. Um, and it can be a time to try something different. It can be a time to strengthen muscles in a different way. Like I said, with Pilates or, yes. you know, even you can try an at home hit workout or something. You weird. can do whatever you can do, whatever you want, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> right? it's it's you can do whatever you want really well yeah. kate i really appreciate it this is uh kate webb from verb ballets and um it was a delight thank it was you, a delight Brian. thank you very much thank for doing this for me connected yeah this is a can we reconnect on this way again yeah i would love to see jump into class too i saw lena could jumped in <laughs> yes oh uh, maybe we'll have a couple people you know maybe we'll have a couple people on, on this this is a I'm great be, oh yes that's right we're gonna see you we're gonna see you maybe tuesday or friday you're gonna teach with us the three of us would be kind of oh. fun oh, oh. you don't you don't know that yet but i think you're gonna we're gonna we're that. gonna contact you for that so that all right my fantastic. friend take stay healthy okay it's good to yeah. see you you too okay.